nowadays it's all SUV this, SUV that. Isn't it about time that a manufacturer offered something which isn't just an SUV, perhaps something a little bit like this. This is the new Citroen C5X and it's the perfect blend between SUV, sedan and even an estate. This is the answer to the sedans that we've lost, the cars that no longer are offered in the UK and I'm really excited about it. Citroen don't like being put in a box, they like standing out and I think they're about to do that with this new offering. So if you want to find out everything there is to know about the all new Citroen C5X, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then hit that subscribe button. So let's start by talking about the exterior of the new Citroen C5X. Stylish is not really a word that's been related to Citroen recently. All of their cars are funky, friendly, family SUVs, and all of their style seems to have been sucked into the DS brand. Until recently, the Citroen C4 is a fantastic bit of design, and personally I think it's one of the biggest glow ups in a long time. And now the Citroen C5X carries across that same design language. It definitely feels like they're sucking some of it back out of DS to appeal to a new market. And I think they're having a really good go at it. You have this fantastic chrome chevron grille with the gloss black that runs all the way along into the middle and flows into these LED daytime running lights. Underneath you have some LED headlights which are in the three cluster design which is instantly recognisable as Citroen. The chevrons have really gone to town on this car. They are everywhere if you look very closely. In the headlights, you have the chevron design. In this bottom part of the grille, you have the chevron design. Citroen are proud of their heritage and I like that and I think it just about works. This grille at the bottom, I like it on the C5X. I do think it looks a little bit much on some of the larger SUVs like the C3 Aircross and soon to be the C5 Aircross. But on this, I think it works. The two-tone paintwork of the white and the black roof looks great as well and it's separated by this chrome bar that runs all the way along the roof line. The only thing is is you can kind of see where Citroen are going with with their target audience for this car. It comes available in a white, a couple of grey colours, a black, nothing particularly funky or inspiring but perhaps that's something that they're trying to get away with. If you want to go for a funky car then you could choose the C5 Aircross. This just gives you an extra option to choose from. The alloy wheels on this top spec hybrid model are 19 inches and they're in a pretty funky design. For me personally probably a little bit too busy. As someone that is constantly having arguments with curbs they could be an issue. Around the back, and I have slightly mixed opinions of the rear, I love it, I really like the design of it, but I just feel like it doesn't look quite right because it's sitting up higher with that SUV stance. However, it really does have that sporty appeal. You've of course got the double spoiler that a lot of brands are now doing, but unlike on the Citroen C4, the spoiler doesn't run along the back window, so it doesn't impede on your view. You've also got those chevron style rear lights which are mirrored from the front. The boot is great, wide with a load loading area. Luggage capacity is 485 litres for the hybrid and 545 for the combustion car and a scuff plate to keep that boot tidy. Comfortable seats are not just reserved for the front passengers. The seats back here are ultra squidgy as well. I'd be more than happy on a long journey. Plus, look at that legroom. I haven't moved my front seat forward and I have all of that space. Headroom is not that great and especially because of the panoramic sunroof, it's slightly tight. And the sunroof doesn't come all the way back either, so the rear passengers don't get much benefit. However, despite the fact that there's rear tinted windows and you also have a white headlining, so it's reasonably light. The middle seat isn't the best, it does feel slightly narrow. However, there's not much of a transmission tunnel, so your legs should be more than comfortable. You've got two USB-C charging ports, a pull-out armrest with some nice deep cup holders and even somewhere to pop your mobile phone. Both design and comfort go hand in hand with this car. Everywhere you look there's just some subtle details which 
elevate it against some of its competition. For instance, you have this wraparound design which continues on the door cards and then across the dashboard. It's almost a wood effect with those chevrons etched into it. You then have this textured dashboard as well, that chrome detailing that's on the outside of the car wrapping all the way around and going behind the floating touchscreen. It does feel very pretty. You even have the etched details around the volume button and you have the same etched details continued on your gear selector. It really is super comfortable as well. These seats are fantastic. They're heated, ventilated and even have the massage function, which has my favourite name, which is the cat paw massage. What more could you want than to be massaged by cat paws? There's also details on the seats as well. Again, that chevron detail and below you have the same detail mirrored on the seats as on the dashboard really quite fancy right and even as standard it gets a great amount of spec you get things like automatic lights automatic wipers a digital dashboard you also get your reversing camera which is very classic citroen but on this top spec model you get extra things like wireless charging pad of course you get your satellite navigation apple carplay and android auto is standard you get adaptive cruise control and the Citroen has some really fancy specification when it comes to terms of keeping it comfortable on the road, which I'll explain in a minute because it's the first that I've heard of its kind and I'm really quite excited about it. It feels very driver focused as well. It's wrapped around to the driver. You have this centre console with lots and lots of storage. You've got storage in the centre armrest. You've also got an area here that you can pop your phone a couple of decent sized cup holders, again another section to pop your mobile phone, a wireless charging pad and then you also have a section to hide it all away and make it look nice and neat and tidy. There's not really any negatives inside this cabin. You do have to remember that to use the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto you will need to have a USB-C charging port. Your USB is in the armrest, but it's not going to actually work with your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The dual screen setup in the C5X is very good. I really like the fact that they've moved across that lighting from behind the screen that you get in the C4, but something that is better than the C4 is the head up display. Rather than being on a flimsy bit of plastic, it's actually projected onto the screen of the head. And I'm not really one for head up display, but it is needed in the C5X because that screen's quite small. Some information that won't fit on that screen can be put onto your head up display. And you know how I love just little funky bits of design which are so small things but keep me happy. I really like that to adjust the head up display is actually on your wing mirrors. So you now have three options. You can move your wing mirrors or you can also move your head up display, which I really like. The central touchscreen is really easy to use. It's nice and clear. I do really like the design as well. And of course, it's fantastic that you've got physical climate control dials, so it's not all put onto the screen. I also like that Citroen have a few physical buttons as well. A physical home button. What is worse than when you get in a brand new car and all you wanna know is how to get home on the system, but you don't know how to? Well, Citroen have put a physical button so that's nice and handy there's another one as well for seeing all of your statistics you can see your driving statistics and in this hybrid as well you can see how the car is coping with the electric the c5x is available with a choice of either 1.2 or 1.6 litre petrol engines badged puretech 130 and puretech 180 with you've guessed it 130 or 180 ps or a plug-in hybrid version the hybrid that I've been driving is equipped with a 12.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, producing 225 PS and is good for an official 34 miles of zero emissions running in electric mode. As soon as you jump behind the wheel of the C5X, it is so clear that they had comfort in mind at every step when they were designing this car. It really does feel like you're driving on a cloud. These seats for a starter, they are so comfortable, but they do manage to still hold you in when you're going around corners. They're not quite as huggy as you'd have in a more kind of sports performance car, but then that's not what this car claims to be. 
It also has some very clever suspension upgrades to help it cope with the roads. So if you go for a petrol or a diesel variant, then you get the classic progressive hydraulic dampeners and they'll soak up all those bumps in the road to give you that magic carpet feel. If you go for the hybrid version, however, it gets one step further. So of course, it's a heavy car. It weighs a lot with that added battery. So what have Citroen done to combat that? Well, they now have a very clever system which actually scans the road ahead and it will change the car's suspension setup to cope with what's coming, which is amazing. Of course, in a car that is primarily set up for comfort, even when you pop it into the sport drive mode, it does feel quite light on the steering still. It's not all that engaging. However, it's not too bad and it is better than something like the Aircrosses, the C5 Aircross, the C3 Aircross. But if you're looking for a real driver focused engaged car, then this one might not be for you. But then I don't think I need to tell you that. I think you already know that. But for most of the driving conditions, it copes really well. And it's not completely unresponsive. There is still some feel through the steering wheel. It just doesn't really set your pulse racing. This plug-in hybrid variant gets 220 brake horsepower when the fuel and the battery is combined. Does that sound familiar? Yep, yeah, that's because that's the exact same system that I explained recently is in the new Grandland. It's not too bad. It really does need to be set up for drivers that are only doing very short journeys because once that electric is run out, it does feel kind of forced. That power, it really struggles and it makes a little bit of a racket whilst it does it because this is a heavy car. It needs that hybrid boost of power. It needs that instant torque. And once it runs out, it just feels quite heavy. On these small Spanish roads, it's hard to gauge exactly how big the Citroen C5X is. It does feel quite large, especially because visibility isn't the best. You do have blind spot sensors which make it a doddle and you've also got a lot of other safety technology which will keep you safe. But that rear window is quite small and it feels quite far away as well. I'm sure once you get used to it it'll be a doddle and it's easy to manoeuvre because the steering's light and you've also got a 360 degree camera so parking it won't be too much of a problem either. Just at first it's hard to get perceptions. The Citroen C5X is competitively priced by large SUV standards. A base model will cost cash buyers less than the equivalent Ford Cougar, Mazda CX-5 and Skoda Kodiak. It's a bargain compared to the Honda CR-V, Hyundai Santa Fe, Kia Sorento and Peugeot 5008. The plug-in hybrid model is competitively priced among plug-in hybrids too. However, the negative is they're not expected to appreciate quite as well as a lot of rivals. Well, what do we all think? It's pretty good actually, isn't it? In fact, I'm struggling to find things that are wrong with the Citroen C5X. It's comfortable, it's enjoyable to drive. I really like the design. The price is pretty decent as well, perhaps if you stay away from the hybrid. It ticks a lot of boxes, but are people gonna go for it? I'm not too sure. It just, it doesn't really feel like a car which is connected with the UK, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's what we need to shake up the market. Let me know what you think of the Citroen C5X down below. If you've enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me, then hit that subscribe button. Okay, I'm going to go enjoy sunny Barcelona. No, it's actually really cold. Only I would pick a time to come to Barcelona when it's cold. Thank you.